Hey guys, what's going on? This is Charles at Corona Geek, and this is staff conversation number two. Today we talked with Albert Yale, and he explained to us what ray casting is, how it's used, and how we might implement it in our games. So enjoy. Yeah, I think you're talking about SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And and one of the things that they were talking about back then was, was ray casting and all this other stuff like that. So so what exactly is ray casting? I, I mean... Ray casting is related to ray tracing. They're both, uh, well, ray, ray tracing uses ray casting. And uh, basically, you shoot off a ray from, uh, for every single pixels on your or on the image that you want to render, you shoot off a ray into your world to determine what it hits, and then you try to get the properties from the item, what color it is, uh, how reflectant it is, how much uh, color it absorbs, and then you continue shooting off that ray in the world to get you know, uh, whatever other ambient uh, uh, light properties you might get. And that's how you, uh, you do uh, ray tracing for every single pixel in the world. What we added recently in uh, Corona is the ability to do ray casting in the physics world. So ray casting allows you to query the world and do um, line collision with uh, your 2D world. It allows you to know if uh, you have things in, um, in, in the line of sight of an AI character. It allows you to probe the ground for, uh, um, uh, to know where to place a vehicle. It can allow you to place um, uh, a decal on a target, uh, like a reticle. Uh, it allows you to basically, in a dynamic world, know where each, um, what, what possible collisions you might have between a point A and a point B. So, but this is all, it all has to do with light though, right? Not, not actual objects, or are we talking about using it for objects themselves? So initially it was developed for, uh, it's a technique that was developed for graphics programming, but it can apply in all sorts of environments, uh, uh, physics, AI, uh, you know, for AI navigation, for example. It's, it's not limited to graphics. And we, pr uh, we provide the ability to query the world, but what you do with it is entirely up to you. Okay, so how, why would somebody use ray casting then? What would be there? Can you give me like an example of what they would do? You could use it to help an AI character navigate a world without hitting objects. Okay, so you could use it in sort of like a maze or something like that? Yeah, basically um, in the, phys the physics system, no, uh, without ray casting, reports collision, collisions after the facts, once two objects have actually collided. With ray casting, you can anticipate these collisions. You can query the system and say, hey, if I continue down that path, am I going to collide with anything? So this way, you can tell an AI character, well, if I continue down that path, I'm going to collide with a wall, so maybe I should change orientation and go in a different direction. So I would imagine in a 2D space, that would work really well for being able to figure out where things are, like in a platformer game or uh, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in platform platformer game, uh, any games where you have a very rich, lively, dynamic environment and you want a, uh, a, a very smart AI characters and you want the environment to be able to spawn things all around without colliding, mm -hmm. then yeah, it's great to probe the world. It's very, very useful. And is this something that we're going to support in Corona or what, what's the deal there? Yes, it's uh, currently available in the uh, latest daily build. And, and what do you need to do in order to get access to it? In the physics system, there's a new function called raycast. You provide the uh, coordinates of point A and point B in content space, along with the maximum number of objects you want to uh, obtain. So uh, if you're only interested in the very first object you hit, then just pass in the one. If you're interested in obtaining all the possible objects, just pass in zero then if uh, any objects are hit along the, the, along the way between A and B, you'll get them uh, in a table. And this table will contain the, uh, the display object that was hit, the hit position in content space, and the hit surface normal. 